everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ty and Sky's Health Pub. We hope you guys are enjoying your spring, um, and in fact, since the world is such a wonderful, wonderful, odd, and interesting place, I am super excited about the topic that we are going to be discussing today. As always, I am joined by ever so dapper, Mr. Sky. Welcome, Sky. Hello, everyone. We are going to be discussing Two of my, well, actually, I should not say two of my favorite topics. We're going to be discussing one of my favorite topics and one of my least favorite topics um, in existence, all in the same podcast, Sky. Can you believe it? Oh, my God. Are you ready for wow. this? <laughs> That's a lot. I, I, I've never been more ready for something in my entire life than I have been right at this moment. Perfect. So let me put it to you this way, Sky. If I could tell you um, that based on kind of more recent information uh, that you could go out this summer and avoid potentially the uh, dearth that is uh, mosquitoes and mosquito-borne illnesses by simply blaring some hot dubstep tracks at your next summer barbecue, would you believe me? I I would first have to ask, is dubstep dead? (laughs) And if so... uh, if uh what is is this some kind of mosquito dubstep revival like what's going so on So it just may be um in fact because there there was actually a team of of researchers that looked at um whether or not dubstep music and more specifically one dubstep song from one dubstep artist a man uh known as Skrillex Oh my god uh and the song being Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites, it was looking at whether or not this track could indeed help prevent the spread of mosquito-borne illnesses. So we're talking illnesses like yellow fever, we're talking illnesses like the Zika virus, and the uh, dengue fever, as well as, and I'm probably going to completely... Uh, completely destroy this pronunciation, um, but I'll the go for it. <laughs> but I'm going to take a stab at it anyway because it is uh, fun to say the chikungunya virus. Well, we're going to have to rename it to something else afterwards. We're going to have to call it the you know scary monsters <laughs> virus, the scary monsters virus. So yes, these are a few of the the uh, mosquito spread viral illnesses. Um, that affect people. Uh, typically, these diseases are found in more tropical areas. But anyway, we're going to reverse all the way back to where we were talking about Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites and how that uh, kind of ties into all this. So this team of researchers wanted to look at um, the effect of the music of Skrillex, or again, Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites, on the behavior of mosquitoes, particularly the 80s, Egypti mosquito. And this is the mosquito that spreads those viral diseases that we talked about. Again, Zika, Dengue, Skylar with the big C virus or the scary monsters virus. Give us your best pronunciation. Oh, I put him on the spot. Chickagunya. (laughs) Nice work, man. Uh, (laughs) Bam. Got it. Owned and (laughs) on. And yellow fever. So that's why they picked the this particular mosquito. Um, and what they did is they actually took mosquitoes and um, kind of <laughs> as though they were throwing them into a uh, dubstep club straight out of, well, I don't know, 2010, 2011. Oh, wow. They stuck these mosquitoes in a room with this music blaring. And what they found is that the mosquitoes themselves – actually took blood meals uh, fewer times. The mosquitoes that were actually exposed, rather, to scary monsters and nice sprites fed on blood or fed on humans fewer times. And they also found that mosquitoes that were exposed to the song had sex far less often than mosquitoes without the music. Whoa, wait, so... so so let me get this straight then. So these mosquitoes, when they heard, you know, the bass drop, they had the exact opposite effect <laughs> than what we would if we were listening to this song and being like, you know, like, 
I'm just like, is Sonny like? Hold on, hold on. Can, can is you, Sonny hold like, on. An, like an epidemiologist? Like, what's going on? Hold on, I need you to. Uh, can you give me that that dubstep? Uh, that that du- that hot dubstep uh, drop that you just oh, threw here we on go. us? Let's let's hear it again. <laughs> oh man, Skyler, that is that is such the opposite of a mosquito aphrodisiac. Um, just like scary monsters and nice sprites. We need to get well, this well, track me, on the radio. We need to ooh. we need to stop those mosquitoes from breeding. Aaron, Aaron, throw throw a drum ter- uh, drum track. You can uh, you can take me saying this is the drop, and then throw Skylar's whack awesome uh, dub dubbed out uh, bass that he was just throwing on us. You know, crank it up to eleven. We're gonna throw that out there. We're gonna stop some mosquitoes from breeding. Hey, Sonny, Sonny Moore, if you want to, co- you know work with us you know i i'd gladly do a song featuring you no problem you know <laughs> just you know let us know uh you know i i think that you know it, it brings a lot of good ideas because especially you know if you notice that mosquitoes are you know grouping up in a particular place it just gives me the idea that maybe i should buy some really loud speakers <laughs> annoy all my neighbors and just play you know scary monsters and nice sprites for hours on end to try to just disturb, you know, the nearby population of mosquitoes. And maybe, maybe I'll de- be, de- be doing my part for humanity by playing more Skrillex. Oh, exact, exactly, Sky. So, you know, when your neighbor calls the cops on you for a noise complaint and they show up at the door, you can be like, hey, I'm just trying to be a responsible, you know, member of, of, of the, the public health initiative here in the area. I am preventing the spread of mosquito-borne illnesses. To my neighbor. And this is the thanks I get. I get you guys at my door. Just just imagine CDC response squads like <laughs> carrying around big giant boom boxes or something, right? Oh my god, they're And then so they all awesome. have hair just like like Skrillex and they they got like the, the, the black rim glasses, you know, and they're just like you know, okay, let me go, uh, you know, like, are you guys ready to, uh, sir, I've, I've heard that there's a report of uh, mosquitoes in your area. Are you ready to drop the base? And it's like, uh, yeah, can I get a, um IPA while they're at it? Like, please, <laughs> come on. Like, you know, like, they have a case of that with them. They're, you know... Where like they shot it, they shop at nothing but Hot Topic, you know, like it's uh, it'd be good. <laughs> I think CDC has some funding set aside for this, and uh, yeah, they'd be doing their part for humanity. So I I don't see the downside to this. I mean, oh. more dubstep, you know, bring it back, you know, maybe maybe it'll be good again. I don't know. No, th- there there is no downside. I mean, this is just this is just crazy. I mean, you think the world could get. Uh, any weirder, odder, uh, more exciting and interesting, and then you, you get hit with something like this, some odd, odd uh, connection, like this observation that music can delay mosquito attacks, potentially reduce blood feeding, um, and disrupt the mosquito mating process. Like, imagine exactly like you said, it seems so crazy to even think about like music-based personal protective uh, measures or music-based control measures um, that could be used to stop the spread or at least dampen the spread of these AEDs or these mosquito-borne diseases. And that was kind of uh, exactly what the the research team had kind of mentioned throughout their study. It's just it's 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 crazy to even think about that. Like it brings out so much. Uh, potential about, you know, there's other studies about the effects of music even on humans, you know, and how it adapts to the elevation of mood or, you know, like, the, you know, some people listen to music that helps their work ethic, you know, like it keeps them on task or when they're studying, you know, like shout out to lo-fi beats. Uh, but, you know, like, I, I think what's kind of interesting is, uh, especially when you have a song, like the first, I'm just like, how do they even get to the point of, wanting to study this you know how random was it just like someone in a lab being like all right let me hear you know my my mixtape from you know <laughs> you know 2010 and let's see or, or two, I, maybe 2011 even right or I, i'm actually pretty sure I, I think that song came out like you know early 10s i know early 10s yeah because sure. i think that was on either um i mean that the album was scary scary monsters and nice sprites but um you know, and then there was also the Kyoto <laughs> album as well. I think and, that was the um, that was the follow up. So he had the CP yeah. with Scary Monsters, and then yeah, that's right. Yeah, the follow up had Kyoto. Uh, 
And, and and it is interesting that you mentioned that because the the research team uh, put forth that they thought the I mean part of the idea why they particularly picked dubstep and not only dubstep but particularly scary monsters and nice sprites is the mix between low frequencies and high frequencies. Oh wow! Yeah, so so they were particularly looking for that big difference in frequency um, in the music because they thought. Or they, they they pontificated, maybe theorized. We could use that those different frequencies would, I guess, um, be the like we mentioned, the opposite of an aphrodisiac for uh, mosquitoes. Well, Ty. So, what kind of song do you think does that for you? Then, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like, what 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 kind of song really just you know when you, when you hear it, you know, if, if I, I I don't know, like does it just makes you go? I don't feel like doing anything like <laughs> which song makes you know kind of lethargic i oh man i, I don't even know what the what the lethargic uh a human song would be or, or a health lethargic health pub song would be i'd have to think about that um you know i know a song that at least makes me roll my eyes every time i see it <laughs> what's that you know, it's like every time you get rickrolled, you every know, like you it's, Rick you know, like it, how does it, how is it not over yet? You know, but <laughs> you know, I think like every time you hear that song, it's like, eh, you know, I, and then I think that, you know, certain songs, um, like any song by Queen, for example, right? Like you listen to We Are the Champions or I don't know what it is um, about Queen, but like everyone like just is interested in singing along, you know, especially Bohemian Rhapsody, right? So It's a great sing-along song. It really is. It really is. And so now I'm like, do we have to throw in at our summer barbecue playlist, you know? Like, you could be listening to anything, and then suddenly it's like, all right, kids, gather around. It's time for... It's time for Skrillex, you know, <laughs> and then it's be like, and I also have Diplo on here and Major Laser, you know. Well, so. and it would, it would be super interesting, super interesting to see if other types of uh, other types of music, even other other types of uh, you know other other EDM producers, other songs of Skrillex, um, or other genres of music are also effective um, at. You know, stopping the blood meals and stopping the mosquito sex. It, it would be very interesting to find out and see. There's this like gradation, like maybe even uh, there you'd have the opposite effect. Maybe you would find some music that mosquitoes would be like blood feeding left and right to that music. Like that is their bloodless right. song. Like, are they going to listen to Slayer and then all of a sudden they're just going to bite people more? Like, what's the deal, right? Like, so is that, it's that what we signed up for, you know? But it, it's it's just so. Sh- but you know, the fact that they slowed down to Skrillex. I mean, maybe they just need some classical music or something. You know, maybe they got to have some Bach or some Mozart. You know, and yeah, that might be. then then they'll start. You know. Ch- you know, biting people, left and <laughs> no <right>. problem. <laughs> so, like I, I don't know. There's just something mad. I mean, you, you've seen the movies, you know, where there, there's always like some evil person in a lab, right? And right. they're always playing classical music. You're and right. I always wondered, like, what is the deal with that? Like, you never hear them like listening to like, you know, Dr. Dre or something. You know, like, but if you do, it's like, like, it's pretty. I, I, I love when I when I hear that stuff though, because it's usually like some lab tech or something, you know, and he's just like, yeah, and he's doing something like kind of. You know, just like a, a remedial task, you know, something boring, yeah. but he's like, you know, listening to something fun. But like, it's always these evil people, you know, in the lab, like Resident Evil or something, you know, where they're they're just listening to some classical music, and then for some reason, it's like the worst things happen as the classical music's going off. <laughs> like, it's 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 wild. It is. <laughs> Women have come a long way, but the spotlight still only shines on the famous few. That's why I am so excited to introduce to you the Femmoirs Podcast, a brand new show that shares the mic with women of all kinds, backgrounds, and experiences in hopes of inspiring your own perspective. Make sure to subscribe to iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Be prepared to be inspired. The, 
yeah. This whole thing is wild. So while we are gearing up uh, to protect ourselves using scary monsters and nice sprites, uh, what are we actually protecting ourselves from? So as we mentioned, uh, the Aedes aegypti mosquito is the mosquito that was particularly studied, particularly targeted, again, because it is one of the mosquitoes that spreads those different viral infections. Um, and it's interesting uh, why they picked this mosquito. Um, so they picked this mosquito because it spreads these diseases, but why this mosquito is particularly, or the species of mosquito is particularly of interest, um, particularly a problem for humankind, is because this mosquito primarily feeds on human hosts. So in, oh. instead of, so, you know, there, there are many species of mosquito. This particular mosquito has uh, obtained, I guess, the human bloodlust. It, uh, it sampled human blood, and then all of its descendants from then on out are like, this is what we're sticking with. This is the best blood for us. Um, so Vampires, man. The, yeah. Straight up vampires. They are the, they <laughs> are the vampires of the insect world. Um, so these mosquitoes, being that they primarily feed on humans, are the perfect vector uh, for spreading diseases from human to human. Because, again, if they're primarily feeding on humans, going around from human to human to human, uh, they are the perfect vector for spreading these diseases that we've talked about. And I think it's important that we discuss particularly what, uh, why mosquitoes even um, suck blood. Uh, and in fact, in case you knew or didn't know, it is only the female mosquitoes of this species that will actually take the blood meal. Oh, wow. Yep, yep. So the males do not, uh, the males are not the mosquitoes uh, biting you uh, in this instance. It would be the females. And after obtaining a blood meal, a sufficient blood meal, these mosquitoes will go on and lay their eggs. Uh, now, these, the entire kind of immature, uh, life cycle of these mosquitoes um, can uh, can last as little as like one week, so like seven to eight days. Um, and then once they've reached adulthood in that seven to eight days, the adult mosquitoes can be around for three weeks. So a total of about a, a month of life on these mosquitoes. Um, so pretty crazy when you think about it. That really puts it into perspective because we like to think, you know, a single song, right, being – very short. You know, mm -hmm. the song's three minutes or four minutes, right? Right. But for a mosquito, that's actually a significant amount of time in their their lifespan, you know, yeah. as, like especially because, you know, it's – it's. And, and I know we usually just think about like dog ears, for example, right? Where it's like even though, you know, they're – you know, you, could, you can calculate between and, you know, based off dog ears, know how many, you know, human ears or whatever. But, you know, for a mosquito, it seems like almost like – you know, if, if two mosquitoes were talking to each other and it's like, well, back in my day, you know, there was the Skrillex song that was playing. And I just got to say, no one wanted to do anything. No one wanted to bite the humans. You know, it was it was pretty bad. And so, you know, I like to think that in some ways, you know, if, if I played a whole soundtrack, like or if I played like for a full week, just, you know, irritating my neighbors, nothing but on, you know, repeat, I'd have two songs on repeat. First, it would be. You know, Skrillex for sure. And then the second would be probably In the End by Linkin Park. But, <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, and then that way I can, you know, kind of, you know, annoy two different groups, you know, that, and it'd be great um, while also enjoying it. Man, your uh, barbecues are going to be the place to be this summer, Skylar. I'm telling you, like, you, you have to, I mean, it's what the people want, right? You got to, you got to deliver the goods you do the most important thing no you do and and you can save their life while delivering the goods skylar save their life if you would have asked me in 2010 did i think dubstep was going to change the world i'd be like well i don't know i mean maybe maybe a little bit and then it was like yeah it's going to change the world all right <laughs> yeah well and and it is a small step but it but an important one uh these mosquitoes are Historically, like very, very difficult to control, uh, especially this particular species. They are highly resilient. They're adapted to their environments. Uh, they can bounce back um, very quickly, uh, even when beaten down or after they've had disturbances uh, due to things like drought in their natural environment. Because mosquitoes need to feed on blood to reproduce, but they also need a water source to lay their eggs in. So uh, even... 
even after big droughts, mosquito populations can bounce right back up, um, head spinningly fast. Um, and even though we go out and we spray for them, these populations can still bounce back. So they've kind of been a scourge for humankind for a long time. Um, in fact, uh, one of the adaptations of these mosquitoes is that the eggs that they lay, which we mentioned um, need to be laid in water, these eggs can actually withstand drying out and surviving without water for several months. Oh, geez. Several months. Their lifespan is like one month, yet in their egg, without water, they can survive for several months. So they can last through this drought and then pop right back up uh, as soon as there's uh, water in their environment. You know, you're, you're making the case for people to keep more spiders in their home. <laughs> and <laughs> you know, just, more uh, more DJs around in their neighborhood. It's true. Just, you know... Just get a pet spider, name him DJ Skrillex, you know? <laughs> yeah, and, and in fact, like, there's an example put out by the CDC where they, they it's kind of like a thought experiment, and they mentioned just to kind of put uh, all this into perspective on, on how resilient and how, how much these mosquitoes can bounce back from a, a hit uh, to their population. Uh, the CDC mentioned that if we were to eliminate all larvae, pupae, and adult uh, adult mosquitoes in this species the Egypti species, uh, at once. So we just took all of them out. We were able to magically just eliminate all of them from so one So if we site. Thanos snapped them out yes. and we were like, all of you guys are gone. If we Thanos like, snapped them out of existence, all mosquitoes, not half of the population, all of them from a given site, its population could recover in two weeks as a result of eggs hatching um, during the next rainfall. You hear that, Thanos? You're going to need to collect all of the Infinity Stones again and snap over and over and over. <laughs> it's gonna be, he's going to be snapping left and right. There's going to be so much snapping uh, that he's going to have to do to get involved. So, so not, even, not even Thanos uh, can control uh, the scourge of these 80s Egypti mosquitoes. You know, I... I keep I, I just have the vision in my head of like Sonny Moore with an infinity gauntlet. I don't know. I just <laughs> oh, think it would God, be Oh God, that is awesome. Like, <laughs> that would be like just amazing and be like, I'm here to stop, you know. <laughs> and then maybe I don't know, the Avengers could be an assembly of different mosquitoes. I don't know. Like maybe maybe I'm just playing around with silly ideas, but I mean <laughs> Oh. It, it just is what it is, and but you know, every time I I, I I I hear about mosquitoes and how resilient they are, you know, like and and I always am amazed, like even in personal life, you know, it's just like God, these little these little guides will not go away. No, and and you know, it's kind of like that song, you know, I get back, I get knocked down, but I get up again. You know, <laughs> like it's like that's how they are. Like they just don't go away. Like I mean, even in winter, where they're all just like they die off, and then just suddenly they're back, and they're like, hey, surprise, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like it's just great. Uh, great, I uh, guess great for them, not so great for us. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, they're just a scourge. I mean, I, I'd rather have mosquitoes than other other types of bugs, uh, you know, but. I mean, maybe maybe we just got to have like some some spiders moving into the corners and like you know they can help out deal with this this issue. Yeah, teach or, them how to spin you know. records. Uh, you know, <laughs> this is perfect. This is perfect. So yeah. you need to teach your house spiders how to use your DJ equipment, and then you're set for life. Really, keep them from breeding. I mean, kill the ones that are trying to breed. It'd be perfect. I mean, almost we're thinking about like putting all the pest control businesses out. <laughs> oh know, yeah, like, we're just gonna stop their business. Or you know, they could adapt. They could, you know, like just imagine just little earplugs coming in vans. They, they, yeah, they, yeah, they get little mosquito <laughs> earplugs. The, <laughs> oh no, they can't. They can't hear him. He has his he has AirPods in. They're, you know? they're the pe so. <laughs> <laughs> they're the people at the uh, sitting along the back wall at the concert who got drugged there by their friends with yep, the earplugs yep. in their ears. Actively oh, trying to not engage with the rest of the crowd. Those are the mosquitoes. But those are the mosquitoes that will survive to spread uh, Zika virus. So how soon, though, do you think it will be until the CDC offers Sonny Moore a job? Oh, like, we need to make this happen, this, man. Like, I mean, because I just imagine if they're not going to offer him a job, I think that they'll just be like, hey, can you make more music <laughs> and try to intensify this discrepancy before between you know, low frequency and high, and then, you know, make it, make an even like, you know, dirtier dubstep version of <laughs> scary monsters and nice sprites. And let's see if we can actually eradicate 
this population like in a study oh like i imagine this like at a movie like grand scale so you, you okay so we we have the government the cdc contracting skrillex out to try and make like you said an even dirtier version of scary monsters and nice sprites even dubbier version and then what they're going to do skylar is they're going to gather all of the speakers known to humankind in one area <laughs> and they're going to turn it up to 11 uh, and they are going oh to God. just blow out all of the mosquitoes in the tropical areas. Get rid of them. With one, one ringing out, massively massive drop. I feel like... There, the drop heard around the world. There's going to be so much repercussions to this action. But, you know, <laughs> the folly of man knows no bounds, right? <laughs> right. So, so we would have to... because. Uh, that would be so interesting because, you know, just to see what would happen to our environment, period, from something like that. Uh-oh, I yeah. mean, what, what, would, would a noise so deep in depth, <laughs> like, could it do things that we just couldn't even imagine? Could we awaken ancient gods at the bottom of the sea? <laughs> like, what, what is going to happen, you know? Like, Ooh, there's a give and a take just on imagine there. Being, <laughs> just imagine being in a submarine when that happens, right? You'd be like, sir, there's... <laughs> It was one ping, <laughs> and it broke all of our equipment. <laughs> it broke all our sonar equipment. <laughs> oh, shoot. Well, yeah, so basic uh, uh, basic takeaway from this entire discussion of ours today is uh, dubstep uh, will make a comeback as a mosquito control method, potentially. Uh, so at your summer barbecue... Your DJ can become your new best friend, especially if you find yourself in a tropical area like Florida. Uh, Florida, maybe some areas of Texas, even further south, uh, Puerto Rico. Befriend a DJ, especially a dubstep DJ. Have them crank out that music during your suburb barbecues and help potentially decrease the spread of uh, diseases like Zika virus. And, and Ty, I think we have to, we have to close out with, with a drop. I don't think there's any other way to close out this episode, but with a drop. So I, I got to hear your best dubstep drop. Oh god, right now. Sky, that is, that is totally why we brought you on. I I I I um I just I don't I don't have the high frequency low frequency range that you do, man. <laughs> it's so cop out. Cop out. <laughs> so how about how about this? I'll use the powers that be. I'll use my powers of knowing uh, personally the producer to uh, have him. End us with some significantly, wonderfully awesome drops. So what we're, we're going to do here, Skylar, we're going to do this together. Mm-hmm. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to magically have a drop happen through the awesome magic of post-production. And how we're going to bring this about is we're going to do our toast, but we're going to end our toast with a 3-2-1, and then we're going to dub out of this episode. Are you ready for this? Perfect. And we're going to help Perfect. save some people, potentially, from some mosquito-borne illnesses, if they have our podcast cranked at their summer barbecue, like you know, you know people do. So, <laughs> hey, just be- hey, Sunny, Sunny, just listen out. You know, like just check us out. Just saying, you know, we're, <laughs> we're willing to work with you here, bud. All right, so so here we go. At this point, I'm assuming we got a little bit of a of a drum building, maybe with with a synth starting to build throughout this. So are you ready? Raise your glass, Skylar. That's right. Uh, to, I got some cups. To knowledge, good and true. To the future, future health, health of, of youth, youth and, and the, the prosperity, prosperity that, they bring. that they bring. Three, two, one. <laughs> Health Pub.